6. Soviet Nuclear Reactors When the United States and the Soviet Union were entangled in the infamous Cold War arms race, it's unclear whether either superpower was thinking about how they would one day safely dispose of outdated nuclear weapons and vehicles. Since then, both the US and Russia have discovered just how complicated, time-consuming, and expensive this task truly is, especially when it comes to the nuclear reactors in retired submarines and ships. Russia lacks both a comprehensive plan and the money to properly dispose of its nuclear-powered Navy vessels. For now, these vehicles either languish in storage or at the bottom of the Barents and Kara Seas. Of the 244 nuclear submarines the Soviet Union produced during the Cold War, 180 have been taken out of service. Simply put, the government couldn't afford to keep them operational. Under Russia's current system for disposing of nuclear submarines, only three to six vehicles can be dismantled per year, resulting in a horrendous backlog that only seems to be getting worse as the country's submarines continue to age out of their service lives. In the past, the Soviet Union dumped reactor coolant and other low-level liquid radioactive wastes into the sea. The practice was forbidden in 1972 by the London Dumping Convention, but nuclear reactors have still made their way into Russian waters. To make matters even more complicated, past Soviet leaders did not plan for the Cold War to end peacefully or for the USSR to go broke like it did. Because Russia has nowhere to store liquid waste or spent fuel, the 110 or so of its decommissioned submarines that still have operating nuclear reactors are currently manned by skeleton crews. Experts have pointed out that a country's failure to properly dispose of its military hardware was once considered that nation's problem alone. But when it comes to nuclear materials and the dangers they pose, it's a different story. Russia's problem is a concern to the international community at large, and the inevitable solution will involve providing Russia with an influx of financial assistance and resources. In 2021, Russia announced plans to lift several of its submerged nuclear reactors by 2030. Whether or not it ends up happening remains to be seen. 5. The Hanford Site In Benton County, Washington, pollution at a former nuclear production complex called the Hanford Site poses serious ongoing risks to the environment, wildlife, and human population. Located along the Columbia River, the sprawling site was established in 1943 as part of the infamous Manhattan Project, which saw the development of the world's first ever nuclear weapons. It was also home to the world's first full-scale plutonium production reactor. The secret facility was expanded during the Cold War and eventually grew to encompass 500 square miles. It was home to nine nuclear reactors and five plutonium processing complexes, and most of the plutonium for the US nuclear arsenal's more than 60,000 weapons was made here. The majority of the nuclear reactors at the Hanford site were shut down between 1964 and 1971, and the final reactor was decommissioned in 1987. More than 53 million gallons of highly radioactive waste was left behind, and the US government largely ignored its dangers until it became obvious that something urgently needed to be done about the pollution. By the time authorities devised a cleanup plan in 1989, significant amounts of radioactivity had permeated the surrounding environment. More recently, it was discovered that an underground tank had been leaking hundreds of gallons of radioactive waste into the ground every year since 2010. In 2017, the roof of a tunnel that houses highly radioactive waste, including contaminated train carriages, collapsed from old age. While no radioactivity linked into the air, things could have turned out much worse, especially in the event of an earthquake. The pollution remains a problem today as the scientists work to assess the radiation's effects on the environment, wildlife, and human health. And while it may be too late to undo a lot of the damage, the work to clean up the Hanford site is ongoing. Since 1989, the U.S. Department of Energy has spent upwards of $164 billion cleaning up its nuclear waste sites. For now, the bulk of the money is spent on merely maintaining the aging infrastructure. 
Some experts believe the government is staving off an impending disaster and have urged officials to prioritize the cleanup of its nuclear waste sites. Whether or not their advice will be heeded before something terrible happens remains to be seen. Do you think the government is secretly planning ahead? Let us know in the comments and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. 4. Zaporizhia Plant Located in southeastern Ukraine, near the city of Enohoda, the Zaporizhia nuclear power station is Europe's largest facility of its kind, and it's among the 10 largest nuclear power plants in the world. At its peak, it supplied energy to as much as 20% of the country. Zaporizhia was built during the Soviet era and once again fell into Russian hands in 2022, following Putin's invasion of the country. By then, the plant's workers had already shut down two of its six reactors to reduce the risk of a disaster. For several months, Ukrainian employees continued to operate the plant under Russian control. In September 2022, the facility completely halted its operations due to continued shelling around the property. Meanwhile, Russia and Ukraine pointed the finger at one another for the shelling. The ongoing war has created major concerns that the plant is one step away from nuclear disaster via sabotage, attack, or accident. These fears have peaked since mid-2023, as Ukraine planned to launch a counteroffensive against Russian forces in the region. Heavy fighting is expected, and it would take only a slight misstep for the biggest catastrophe since Chernobyl to occur. Speaking with Sky News, workers expressed their worries that the leak of radioactive gases could cause devastation across Europe, Russia, and the Mediterranean. Any of the plant's thousands of fuel rods could experience a meltdown, which would trigger the release of hydrogen gas. Writing for the Daily Beast, author and veteran national security analyst Joseph Silencione explained that an explosion would likely follow releasing large plumes of radioactive material that are capable of traveling hundreds or thousands of miles. The Zaporizhia plant's six nuclear reactors contain hundreds of tons of fuel, and the site's also filled with thousands of spent fuel assemblies and pools filled with thousands of tons of spent fuel. Much of the material is hot and needs to constantly be circulated and cooled to avoid disaster. Doing this requires electricity. In the event of a power outage, the pumps would not be able to circulate the water, and the fuel rods would eventually heat up to the point of exploding. Experts have warned that fighting near the plant could easily knock out the electricity. They're also worried about staff members making deadly mistakes, as well as a deliberate attack or sabotage by the Russians. Putin has refused repeated calls to demilitarize the plant, and he doesn't seem like he plans to change his mind. Sedencioni described his stubbornness as a nuclear ace in the hole that he could play as part of his game of nuclear chicken. At this point, the only realistic option is for the world to hold its breath and hope that nothing terrible happens. In Cinturoni's words, the odds of a disaster at Zaporizhia are better than even, and the nuclear time bomb is ticking. Perhaps the most nonsensical aspect of Putin's refusal to bang down is the fact that a disaster could easily affect vast swathes of Russia. Nuclear fallout particles are light, and they travel easily. In other words, they go far and fast, and it doesn't take much more than a breeze for them to move hundreds or thousands of miles. 3. Runet Island Situated in the Marshall Islands, roughly halfway between Australia and Hawaii in the South Pacific, Runin Island is part of a coral island called Eniwetak Atoll. The US carried out dozens of nuclear tests here between 1948 and 1958. During a cleanup effort in the 1970s, workers built a concrete dome to house radioactive waste left behind by the tests. Nicknamed the tomb, the structure was meant as a temporary fix until the American government came up with a better long-term decontamination plan. Unfortunately, that never happened. Today, radioactive waste is escaping the crumbling concrete and seeping into the soil below the deteriorating building. A typhoon 
major storm surge, or other major weather event is all it would take to rip the dome out of the ground and disperse the rest of its contents into the ocean. And since it's leaking anyway, locals have understandably become concerned for their health. During the 1980s, the US officially returned Eniwetak Atoll to the Marshallese government. The American government claims that it has fulfilled its obligations to the country, but Marshallese authorities argue that they lack the resources to clean up the lingering mess that the US left behind. Runet Island was quarantined decades ago and remains off-limits today. But because radioactive waste can easily travel through water and air, this doesn't mean that the surrounding islands are safe. Whether or not the United States will become more willing to help remains to be seen. 2. Frozen Fallout As the melting of the world's glaciers is accelerated by climate change, scientists have become increasingly worried about dangerous materials being released into the environment. One well-established concern stems from the potential for long-frozen pathogens like anthrax and ancient viruses to seep out from the permafrost. There are also growing fears that radioactive fallout will seep into surrounding air, water, and ground. In early 2019, experts revealed that they had discovered evidence of fallout from past meltdowns and nuclear tests being encased in glaciers around the globe. During a study, the team detected man-made radioactive material at 17 sites in the Arctic, Iceland, the Alps, the Caucasus Mountains, British Columbia, and Antarctica. They found it in alarmingly high concentrations, according to researcher Caroline Glasson, who told the news agency AFP that the study found some of the highest levels of radioactivity among sites outside nuclear disaster exclusion zones. According to the New York Post, Nuclear fallout typically falls back down to Earth in the form of acid rain, which is then absorbed into the ground. Clausen described this as a sort of one-off event. But in colder regions, fallout sometimes returns to the ground in the form of snow, then becomes encased in ice, where it gathers in alarmingly high concentrations and can stick around for decades. And in the event of a big enough disaster, the fallout can travel around the world permeating even the most remote corners of the globe. While studying sediment cores, Glasson said that her team detected fallout from the 2011 Fukushima meltdown in Japan, as well as large amounts of radioactive particles left behind by weapons tests. The cores also show a clear spike in radiation levels around the time of the Chernobyl disaster. What also makes the radioactive materials highly dangerous is the fact that as they decay, they create extremely hazardous residues. For example, when plutonium decays, it creates a byproduct called americium, which remains radioactive for 400 years. According to Glasson, americium is more soluble in the environment. In other words, it spreads extremely easily, and it also emits stronger alpha radiation. While the study didn't focus on the potential impacts of melting glaciers releasing radioactive material into the environment, the team speculated that it could contaminate food and water and have other detrimental effects. The findings highlight the often overlooked reality that the world is still grappling with the effects of human activity from long ago, and it will continue to do so for decades, if not centuries, to come. 1. Lake Karachay Located in the southern Ural Mountains of eastern Russia, Lake Karachay functioned as a dumping ground for nuclear waste for decades starting in 1951. Both the activities at Lake Karachay and the existence of the nearby Mayak nuclear production plant were kept secret from the world until 1990. Western scientists first gained access to the site two years later in 1992. At the bottom of the lake, they discovered an 11-foot thick layer of radioactive sediment. At its absolute worst, Lake Karachay was so polluted that a person could die from radioactive poisoning within an hour and a half of standing along its shoreline. Experts were even more alarmed to find that the highly toxic water had made its way into nearby freshwater sources. By the time contamination was discovered, an estimated 65% of the local population had been poisoned. In another shocking display of a complete disregard for public health and safety, 
the Soviet government failed to take action when the lake dried up in 1967. Radioactive dust blew into nearby villages, causing even more residents to fall ill. Because the clandestine facility and the secret city its operators lived in did not exist on any maps, residents were unsure why they were getting sick or who to blame for it. To prevent the problem from worsening, the government filled the lake in with cement. It was far from a permanent fix. Certain nearby sites will remain polluted for centuries to come. But the measure seems to have reduced the dangers associated with Lake Karachay itself. So, how dangerous is the lake today? The truth is that nobody knows for sure. Even the most skilled radiologists lack the experience necessary to answer that question. But they're monitoring it the best they can and will continue to do so for years to come. Thanks for watching. What would you do if you discovered a bomb buried in your backyard? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Bye.